It's just a little more patience. I need to stop her from helping that old hag before I show my true self. I was on a flight to Hawaii with my mother when I overheard John's voice from the seat behind us. Holly was also sitting next to him, and I frowned at their alarming conversation. As my mother and I silently listened, we became pale at the horrifying things they were discussing. We decided to punish them. They would regret what they had done. When I gave my mother a knowing look, she agreed with me. We vowed to teach them a lesson with my father's support. My name is Michelle. I run a nursing home and I'm 38 years old. Michelle, how about this kind of recreation next time? It involves using milk cartons. My mother is a clerk at our facility. She has a disability and uses a wheelchair. My mother has had a disability since I was 10. She saved me from being hit by a truck that ran a red light and ended up with a spinal cord injury. Since then, she has been using a wheelchair for nearly 50 years. My father worked hard for my mother, running a car manufacturing company. It grew into a major company with global reach. Its annual revenue has now surpassed $1 million and has reached $10 billion. As a result, my father spends more than half the year overseas, and the three of us only get to be together once every few years. Instead, he sends us monthly packages filled with souvenirs, always with a letter inside. Reading those letters with my mother became one of my joys. Great, let's talk to the staff about it. I think our residents will enjoy this kind of activity Having mostly lived with my mother, I chose a career in caregiving when I became an adult. I wanted to be there for her if anything happened. However, once I started working, my mother spent more time alone at home. A wheelchair doesn't allow her to go everywhere freely. Most of her friends are still working, so she has limited social interactions. I worried she might be feeling lonely. So... I talked to my father about doing something together with my mother. He suggested running a nursing home. Your mom used to work in an office. Why don't you become the manager and have her work there? I'll fund it. I'll also reach out to my contacts to gather experienced staff. How about running it as a family? I immediately agreed to my father's wonderful proposal. I was thrilled to do something with both my mother and father. Office work wouldn't strain her, and her bright personality would warm those around her. Even after her injury, my mother never showed a gloomy face. She was always as bright and warm as the sun. Being by her side kept me from feeling down. I believed she could be someone's hope. So I accepted my father's idea. If our facility could be a light for someone, nothing would make me happier. My father then taught me the ropes of running a business. Using that knowledge, my mother and I managed the facility together. I felt our family bond strengthened through this endeavor. Then, tragedy struck us out of nowhere. Michelle, would you like your egg fried for breakfast? This is John. He works as the care manager at our facility and is my husband. In our fifth year of running the facility, he joined as a care manager. He works hard, is well-liked by the residents, and has a bright personality, making him very popular at the facility. People of all ages and genders had a good impression of him. Don and I got married. Now, the three of us live together with his daughter, Holly, from a previous marriage. Holly also works at our facility, doing the same office job as my mother. She works under my mother. A fried egg is fine. Thank you, as always. Even though you have work, you still help with the housework. What are you talking about? Michelle is busier than I am. 
So it's only natural that we support each other as a couple. Exactly. Thanks to Michelle, Dad has started helping with the housework too, which is a huge relief for me. He didn't even know how to use the washing machine before. Holly was scolded for saying too much. Seeing their comedic exchange made me smile. Since marrying John, I moved out of the house, and my mother lives in the residential part of the facility. My father had it built considering my mother's commute. Thanks to that, even after I moved out, my mother wasn't completely alone. There were always people nearby in case of an emergency, providing a secure environment. At least, that's what I thought. But I didn't realize it. The mistreatment my mother was receiving from John and Holly. Hey, Michelle. Would you like to go on a trip with me next time? What's with this sudden suggestion? During my work break, I happened to have lunch with my mother. It had been a while since we had a relaxed conversation like this. But something seemed off. I hadn't noticed since we were always together, but my mother looked thinner. It could be because it was summer, but the facility is air-conditioned 24-7, and her home is also fully equipped with the heating and cooling. It didn't look like a healthy weight loss. Her expression was dark, and she seemed devoid of energy. I listened to my mother's words, feeling concerned. I want to visit your father. To see Dad? Oh, right. It's your anniversary next month. I reflexively asked, surprised by the suddenness. Then I quickly remembered their anniversary next month and solved it in my head. Thinking that was the reason, I quickly continued the conversation. But my mother had a complicated expression, like she had swallowed something bitter. Yes, your father will send me a plane ticket to meet. So, I need some time off. My mother forced a smile to hide her expression. That was the first time I felt something was off with my mother. She seemed scared of something, and I wanted to ask, but she shook her head. Was it not the right place to talk? There were other staff in the break room, and my mother seemed to be concerned about them. But my condition, you know? I want you to accompany me, Michelle. She interrupted me as if to prevent me from speaking. Her abruptness surprised me, causing me to stutter. Seeing my reaction, my mother looked even more anxious, piling on the pressure. Is that okay? I quickly smiled and nodded in agreement. Of course it's okay. It's scary to be alone, right? So until dad gets there, I'll be your escort. It's a special date. So you two need some time alone, don't you think? A date. That sounds a little embarrassing. My mother laughed elegantly, blushing slightly. Maybe I was imagining things. Seeing her like that, I decided not to pry further. A little later, my father sent us two plane tickets. I had already told John and Holly that I was going to visit my father. But since then, I've been traveling all over the U.S. for inspections and meetings at new facilities. I haven't had proper time with my family lately. Maybe I'll invite them out for a meal when I get back. With that carefree thought, I headed to the airport. The tickets my father sent were for Hawaii. Even though I told John and Holly that I was going to Hawaii, I figured I could tell them all about it when I got back. With that in mind, I headed to Hawaii without telling them my destination. On the plane to Hawaii, my mother and I took our assigned seats, and I felt excited as I looked out the window. My mother, too, seemed bright and cheerful about the trip. I'm glad. Mom looks healthy. Feeling relieved to see her happy, I spoke to her. It's been a while since you last saw Dad and went to Hawaii. You're probably a little excited, aren't you? Maybe. You're right. I feel like I'm escaping from that place. What? 
I was about to ask her what she meant by that when I suddenly heard familiar voices from the back seats. How long do I have to keep pretending? I'm getting tired of acting like the good one. It's just a little more patience. I need to stop her from helping that old hag and make her obsessed with me before we show our true selves. Otherwise, if we show our true colors now, I'll just end up divorced. That would make the marriage pointless. I heard Holly and John's voices from the seat behind us. Why are they on this plane? As I listened to their conversation, I couldn't believe the coincidence. This way is really roundabout, you know? But I guess we have no choice. It's for the money. That's right, Holly. Let's forget about that stress today and enjoy our trip to Hawaii. Don't act like you're paying for this trip just because you won it in the community raffle. Hearing their conversation, I couldn't help but be amazed at the coincidence. If they're also going to Hawaii, I could spend time with them while my parents are on their date. It'd be a win-win situation where I could pass the time and they could have a good time. With that optimistic thought, I turned around to greet them when I heard terrifying words from their mouths. Seriously, who spends money on their parents instead of their daughters or husbands? Parents won't be around for long, so you should spend money on your kids who have a future. It's infuriating to waste money on someone who's going to die soon. Just seeing that old hag's face makes me irritated. Come on, don't say that. I've already told the old hag that Michelle should stop supporting her, or else Holly and I will quit the facility, and I'll divorce Michelle. Hearing their tone, which I'd never heard before, I was left speechless. Is the conversation I'm hearing really between Holly and John? As I stood there in shock at their unbelievable conversation, they continued speaking. I even threatened her, saying it was all her fault, so she should stop Michelle soon. She wouldn't want Michelle to be unhappy because of her, right? She'll accept my threats. Dad, you're so bad. It's all just to make Mom spend all her money on us, isn't it? After we get all the money we can from her, you'll just throw her away like you did with the last old hag, right? Exactly. I couldn't hide my shock at the voices and the conversation I was hearing. John had told me he was dumped by his ex-wife, but if this conversation was true, he was the one who dumped her, and Holly found it amusing. I was so angry at the terrible content and the lies that I was about to turn around and confront them. But at that moment, my mother grabbed my arm, her face pale, and shook her head. Please, Michelle, stay calm. Don't say anything. Seeing my mother desperately pleading with me, I stopped moving. It wasn't motion sickness. Her face had turned pale after recognizing John and Holly. I knew my mother didn't get motion sickness, and she had been fine until hearing their conversation. Most importantly, there were my mother's earlier cryptic words. I'm escaping from that place. Did those words relate to John and Holly? As this thought crossed my mind, my mother let go of my hand and took out her phone. She seemed to be sending a message to someone. After a moment, she looked at me and gestured for me to look at my phone. I opened my phone as she instructed and checked the screen. There was a new message notification from my mother. Let's communicate through this messaging app from now on. Following her lead, I continued the conversation with my mother via the app. What is going on? The conversation between John and Holly. It's about you and me, right? I sent the message and watched my mother's face as she received it. She trembled with fear and noticing my gaze, she looked at me and nodded repeatedly. I never told you, but I've been harassed since those two joined the facility. 
I couldn't close my mouth in shock. The messages continued, and the content was even more shocking. At first, they criticized my work. They said that just because I have a disability, only doing data entry work and not other tasks was unacceptable. A newcomer criticizing a senior like that was unimaginable. Even though it was hard to believe, the following messages revealed even more shocking truths. They demanded higher salaries, saying that since I had it easy, my salary should be lower. Since Holly is technically my granddaughter, she said, if my salary couldn't be lowered, I should spend more on her. They kept demanding money from me. I couldn't process it all. We had indeed become family, but work was work. I couldn't tolerate them treating my mother so horribly by mixing personal and professional matters. I couldn't bring myself to do anything for them, so I refused. Then they started threatening me together. They said I should stop receiving support from you, Michelle. If I didn't, they'd leave you. The sheer nastiness and the content made me grip my phone tightly. The worst part was the slander about my mother's condition. The facts written there were so vile that I felt an urge to confront the two behind me right away. Noticing my reaction, my mother sent another message, driving the point home. The real reason for this trip was to tell you about this. I've already discussed it with your father. That's when it hit me. If I acted now, it would render my mother's efforts useless. I always believed I could endure anything as long as you were happy. But those two are a curse that will only bring you misery. Your father also said there's no need to hold back anymore. As I scrolled down, I saw a message from my father detailing our next steps and the waiting location. Reading it brought a smile to my face. With this, we can surely make those two see hell. It means you'll have to play a tough role too. Will you still help? Of course. After what they've done to you, there's no way they're getting away with it. Enjoy your flight while you can. When you land, hell begins. I silently whispered these thoughts to the two laughing crudely behind us. Soon after, the plane landed at the airport. Keeping our heads down to avoid detection, my mother and I waited until they left the plane before we followed. Once outside the airport, a car my father had arranged was waiting, and we quickly got in. Did you explain everything to Michelle? Yes. I sent it all while we were on the plane. I'm sorry, Dad. I was right there with Mom, and I didn't even notice. Usually gentle and kind, my father's face was stern when we reunited after so long. It's not your fault. They were sneaky. It's no wonder you didn't realize. He gently potted my head as I apologized. Then he instructed the driver to follow the car ahead. I know where those two are headed. Once we arrive, we'll start. Michelle, I need you to sign this. Got it. I signed the document my father handed me. Eventually, the car stopped at a hotel. John and Holly entered the hotel to check in. We followed them inside and I reached out to tap John on the shoulder from behind as they were at the reception desk. Michelle. Why are you two here? They were just in the middle of checking in when I silently tapped John on the shoulder. He turned around suspiciously, followed by Holly. Seeing me, my mother, and my father in front of them, they stepped back in surprise and confusion. We're here on a trip too. Right, Mom? Yes. I responded with a broad smile to put them at ease. Relieved, they both sighed and spoke. Oh, you scared me. Now that you mention it, you did say you were going trip. I can't believe we're staying at the same hotel. 
What? Really? That's such a coincidence. We won this trip to Hawaii in the community raffle. There's no way we're staying at the same hotel. We're at a much better place. And what's with that creepy smile? Don't direct it at us, it's gross. I responded in a cold tone, completely different from before. The two were stunned into silence. Then my mother spoke to them. We need to talk to you too. She nodded at the woman at the reception desk, who promptly led us to a meeting room. Wait, what's going on? Why does everyone look so serious? Holly, sensing something was wrong, looked at us with concern. John, too, was visibly nervous, a cold sweat forming on his forehead. I gave them a chilling smile and brought up their conversation from the plane. You two had quite an interesting conversation on the plane. Something about stopping the support, right? I stretched my words out mockingly and their faces turned pale. Of course. They never expected anyone to have overheard their conversation. No way. Were you both on that plane too? Can you stop being so familiar? It's disgusting and uncomfortable now. Though I was smiling, my voice was filled with anger, making Holly shrink back in fear. We were sitting right in front of you. You didn't notice, did you? Well, of course not. You were too busy making a scene and having a stupid conversation. No wonder you didn't notice. I was wondering who was making such a crude and idiotic conversation. It was laughable. As I connected my words with mocking tones, stirring up their emotions. It seemed my way of speaking had struck a nerve. John shot me a glare with a grim expression. What's with that attitude? Are you mocking us? Does it look like I'm not? Maybe you should get your eyes checked because you clearly can't see straight. I continued to mock them while my parents silently watched. Usually, they would have stopped me. But this was all part of the plan. My task was to provoke John and Holly, and it worked. Falling right into our trap, John and Holly began to raise their voices. Stop messing around. What do you want from us? Yeah, why did you bring us here? Let us go already. If anyone's messing around, it's you two. Mocking my mother, threatening her, and trying to extort money. Did you think you could get away with it? We know everything. I shouted back, matching their volume, making them jump in fear. You've done terrible things to my mother, telling her to stop receiving support, right? Saying I should spend money on kids with a future instead of an old woman with little time left. Don't make me laugh. Who would give money to gold diggers like you? Realizing they were exposed, Holly tried to act superior. Beside her, John twisted his face in frustration and glared at my mother for ratting them out. Don't think divorce is the end of it. You two are about to experience a hell you can't even begin to regret. As soon as they heard the word divorce, John and Holly burst into laughter. Divorce. Hey, who do you think is going to sign those papers? Just because we supposedly harassed that old hag? Come on, you have no proof. Exactly. If you want a divorce, you'd need to show proof that we harassed or threatened her. They took my bait, showing their true colors. Holly came back at me, as if poking at my sore spots, with a mocking smile as she leaned in close to my face. If you want a divorce from Dad, you need our consent. There's no way we're agreeing to that. That's true, but the fact remains that you harassed my mother. I bet we could find proof by checking the workplace security cameras, Impossible. We made sure to do it where no cameras could see. We're not that stupid. 
So, you're saying you won't stop harassing my mother? Holly boasted proudly about their tactics. They seemed to misunderstand their superiority, wearing smug smiles and provocatively staring at us. When I asked about the harassment, Holly made a proposal. If you want us to stop, then cut off the support to that hag and transfer $500 to us every month. Right. Lower her salary, and you should have enough to cover it. And if we don't comply? We'll keep harassing her. As long as we get the money, we don't care. If you don't comply, I can't guarantee what will happen to that hag. John and Holly grinned smugly. I let out a big sigh. I couldn't believe everything was going so perfectly according to plan. It was almost too good to be true. Amazed at how easily John and Holly fell into our trap, I pointed behind them. Thanks to your recent comments, we now have proof that you harassed my mother. Huh? What? Confused, they looked in the direction I pointed. There, they saw something glinting. As they squinted and realized what it was, their faces turned pale. This room's security camera is special. It's not on the ceiling but hidden in that ornament, and it records audio too. What? This hotel had once been robbed, and all the cameras had been destroyed. Fortunately, the robbery was thwarted, but hidden cameras were installed everywhere afterward. This room was no exception. The camera was hidden in the eyes of a wooden tiger statue with a microphone in its mouth. You thought the cameras didn't record audio, so you talked freely. But now we have definitive proof of your harassment. Disgusting. This is so unfair. That's right. This is illegal filming. We'll sue you. Realizing they had been completely trapped, John and Holly yelled at me, knowing they were at a disadvantage. Matching their intensity, I spoke with such force that they trembled in fear. Try it if you can. I'll crush you completely. We're always ready to fight you. Damn it. My confident demeanor must have intimidated them. John turned pale, glaring at me with frustration. Beside him, Holly bit her thumbnail, desperately trying to think of a way out. Realizing the lawyer threat wouldn't work, she shifted to accepting the divorce with conditions. If you're getting divorced, you better give us our share of the assets. I know that assets are split evenly in a divorce. Giving up on trying to win me over. She now demanded property division. But I had no intention of giving them a penny. That's when my father stepped in. Sorry, but that's not happening. What? Stay out of this, bold fart. This is a family matter. I can't do that. My wife has been mistreated, and my daughter has been dragged into this. No father would stay silent. Hearing their outrageous statements to my father, my mother and I were speechless. They had angered the one person they shouldn't have. You two won the raffle for this hotel stay at the community festival, right? So what? The thing is, the person who organized that festival is an acquaintance of mine. I had him rig the raffle to lure you here. What? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? They were confused by my father's sudden confession. That was to be expected. It would be hard for anyone to grasp what he had done. My father began to explain clearly to the bewildered pair. We knew you'd participate in the raffle. I showed my friend your photos and had him rig it so you'd win the trip to Hawaii. Wait, hold on. It was pure coincidence that we entered that raffle. Yeah, we might not have participated at all. 
Do you expect us to believe this nonsense? There was no way you'd miss it because your favorites were performing at that festival. The moment they heard that, they turned to me with shocked expressions. I responded with a smirk and a peace sign. Michelle told us about your favorite celebrities. We made sure to invite those idols and models to the festival. We figured you'd stay for the raffle if you were there to see them. And John, you're known for loving free stuff. It was more likely you'd enter than not. Completely falling into my father's trap. John realized how deeply he was ensnared and slumped in despair. But Holly was different. She tried to bolt for the door. But my father had anticipated that too. Waiting outside were his formidable bodyguards. What is this? Give it up. You think we'd let you escape? We're not sending you back home either. What do you mean? I approached Holly with a sinister smile, lifted her chin, and made her look at me. You'll pay for hurting my mother with your labor. What are you going to do to us? You two will work as janitors at this hotel for the rest of your lives. What? Holly shouted in shock. John, too, looked up in surprise, but quickly realized from my expression that I wasn't joking. My father bought this hotel last month. It's known for its affordability and delicious food, but it needs more staff since the rebranding. We were looking for some help. Are you kidding me? Who'd work in a place like this? Besides, you can't keep us here forever. We won't do that. Are you stupid? Our youthful bravado was evident, but she'd soon regret her words. You guys' intentions don't matter. Angered by her disrespect, my father stood up, exuding an overwhelming presence that made Holly flinch. I'm quite well connected here. I have a lot of friends. What are you trying to say? The manager of our hotel is a friend of mine who's from L.A. He grew up in Skid Row. Even Holly knew what that meant. The moment she heard Skid Row, her face turned pale. He's going back to his hometown for about a week starting tomorrow, and he'll be taking you two with him. You won't be coming back. Since they were getting ready for a trip, they could be taken to L.A. without any issues. Realizing this, Holly broke down in tears, begging for forgiveness. I'm sorry. I'll never act like that again. I'll do anything you say. Please, just don't send us there. I'll do anything too. I apologize for everything. Please, let us go back home. Both Holly and John started crying and pleading with us. But we weren't about to listen to them, and I pushed them into despair. Apologizing won't help. You'll work here until you wish for hell instead. Don't even think about running away, because if you do, you'll just be transferred from Hawaii to somewhere even worse. No. Please, Michelle, forgive us. They cried, begging for mercy but I ignored them and instructed my father's bodyguards to take them away. The guards carried them off and they never returned home. Thanks to my father, my mother and I succeeded in getting a revenge on John and Holly. After that, my father had John sign the divorce papers I wrote on the plane. I'll film him signing it and then mail it back. I was impressed by my father's thoroughness. He also demanded compensation from them for the torment they inflicted on my mother. Having experienced my father's power firsthand, they didn't dare refuse. Since then, John and Holly have been working as janitors at my father's hotel. Their salaries are sent to my mother as compensation, and they live in a shared house with other employees. Knowing their past actions, the other employees treat them like slaves, making them work from dawn till dusk. 
Afterward, my parents enjoyed a long-awaited date. I had a wonderful time in Hawaii, and we all had a lovely family dinner. I'm so lucky to have a family like this. Seeing my mother relieved, I smiled too. I'm the lucky one, Mom. What? Thank you for always protecting me. From now on, Dad and I will protect you. So, talk to us about anything that bothers you. You and Dad mean the world to me. As I held my mother's hand, she shed happy tears, and my father gently stroked her hair. Watching them, I felt truly fortunate to be their child. As I watched my mother being supported by my father, I couldn't help but feel grateful for how things had turned out.